Hey everyone, I'm Harley Sobaka. And I'm Anthony Morrow, and today we're thrilled to have with us Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank, co-writers of the original Expanse novels. So we're so excited to have you both here. What a genuine, exciting pleasure for both of us. It, it is. Um, I am a huge sci-fi nerd, which is not a, you know, particularly uh, unique thing to say working in the comic book industry. And reading the Expanse novels, um, I mean, it, it really just took me back to being a kid and having my dad give me his old paperbacks from like the 70s and stuff like that and, and being fully immersed in like hard sci-fi. And I, I loved it. That was that was that was actually that was sort of the mandate. We were we were uh, trying to write the kind of stuff that we grew up reading, and uh, but without the uh, racial and sexual racism and misogyny. Racism, yeah, 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 racism yeah, and sexual, sure. with, yeah, with much sure. less racism, to, or at least different. I mean, yeah. different blind spots. We were trying to trying to aim for different blind spots. Also, I will say, like, I remember reading uh, Leviathan Wakes not too long after it came out, because actually I sold it in my comic book shop because I had like a novel section. And I remember reading Thank it being you like, for that. you're welcome. <laughs> I remember reading it being like, oh, man, this kind of reminds me of like some of like the old like Asimov and other stuff I read when I was like, you know, growing up. But much, much kinder to women. <laughs> and yeah. I remember reading it being like, oh, I saw I sold that book to a lot of women, just so that, you know. Um, but how did you two come together to work on The Expanse? Well, uh, Ty did all of the hard work, and then I <laughs> rolled in later. That was kind of the the uh, order of operations there. Perfect. Uh, Daniel said, you have a good idea. We should write it together and split the money. <laughs> that thing that never happens totally, that's how we did it. That's true. That's, that's a good grift. That's a, that's a really good grift. <laughs> so uh, back in ancient days, Ty and I have a, a mutual friend uh, who um, was approached to design uh, an MMO for a, uh, a Chinese ISP. And this is like back when uh, World of Warcraft just had barely started to uh, rise itself to godhood. Um, and so... No, she didn't know a whole lot about the the structure of video games, and Kai kind of did. So he uh, built this universe for this MMO pitch, and uh, the ISP looked at it, and then looked at how much money it would cost to actually do that, and then kind of backed away from the table, avoiding eye contact. And but <laughs> but the world building was already done and and it was pretty good. And so Ty ran it as a play by post role playing game for I don't know how long, quite a while. Oh, that's so cool. Um, and just to kind of to flesh out and play with the the world building. Um, and then when he and his wife moved to the city I live in, moved to Albuquerque. Um, that same mutual friend introduced us and, and he was running it as a tabletop game up in Santa Fe. I had a kid. I had like a, a recent kid. I couldn't go up to Santa Fe to, to play role-playing games. So he very kindly ran an instance of it in town with uh, me and both of our wives. And we played that probably, we don't, I don't think we only actually played that three or four times before it was like, you know, this is, this is clearly a novel. We should just write this and uh, sell it for pizza money. <laughs> How did you guys create your joint pen name? Because I, I found that out not too long ago, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. I hadn't realized that you guys had created this joint pen name together. Daniel wants a pen name for every new project. Um, so he's got like <laughs> three or four of them now. Yep. And so we just we just used his middle name and my middle name and made a name out of it. Which if we had really thought about it, we would have realized that one of our characters had one of those names and we would not have used that name. Yeah. Uh, James Corey and James yeah. Holden. It's like, yeah, well. Yeah, that, was, that was a mistake we didn't realize until we were already like being published. And we're like, oh. It's complicated. But it, I, 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 have this, I have this thing where I think um, you, you kind of, uh, you're well, well advised to have people know what kind of book they're going to uh, be reading when they pick it up. Mm -hmm. And Daniel Abraham had already been publishing like epic fantasy and however good your uh, space opera is, it's not great epic fantasy. You know, right. it's like, uh, it's like yeah. that thing when you forget that you ordered a uh, tea and you think it's Coke and you drink it doesn't 
doesn't really matter how good it is. It's it's you still get that. Oh, my God, something's terribly wrong. Yep. The Expanse universe started with your novels um, and then became a highly successful TV show. And now we have a comic version. So what is interesting to you both about seeing this story make a jump to so many different mediums? By the time we wrote the books, I was already on my third medium. So (laughs) it's the Expanse has always been moving from medium to medium since its inception. Um, So that doesn't seem weird to me. Um, People ask, is it weird to see your books become TV show? I'm like, yeah, but that was like the fourth thing that happened. Um, (laughs) It was weird seeing my video game idea become a role-playing game. And then it was weird watching the role-playing game become books. And then by the time it became a TV show, I was just used to it at that point. Sure. (laughs) So when they were like, we should make comic books and video games out of it. I'm like, all right. I mean, that's just the next thing, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it all comes full circle eventually, right? It's all going to come back to to a video game. Well, we have we have one funny. now. Yep. Um, Telltale did a Expanse video game um, that was that came out. Uh, what is it? Last year? Yeah. We have not yet become an MMO. That'll be uh, the longest possible path. Yeah. How many How many mediums do you plan to do? At, at this point, I'm happy to get out of the way and let other people do those things. Uh, I mean, with <laughs> like with the comic book, really, uh, uh, the two Bens were the, the champions of that. Uh, ben Roberts and Ben Cook over at Alcon were the yep. ones who really pushed for that project and, and uh, got good writers and artists and put the whole thing together. So at, at that point, you know, we're moving into mediums where Daniel and I are just sort of getting out of the way and letting things happen. Although no, but Daniel did uh, Daniel did work on the comic because he's he's the of the two of us he's the one who actually knows how comics are made. I have I have I have slightly more experience than Ty in how comic books are made. He did like all of the stuff with uh, the consulting stuff on the video game because he knows how video games are made. It's it's nice to have more than one person who knows things. Don't you have totally. several New York Times bestseller comic books? I believe you. That yes, you because they all say George R. R. Martin on them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I the thing that I really love about the comic books is seeing um, other people taking the story and carrying it on, um, and kind of getting their voices into it. Um, mm. It's because it's not, they're not adapting our stuff. When I was adapting Georgia stuff, it was an adaptation. It was take the book and make it into a comic book. Yeah. This is take the story and then take it somewhere. See what you do with it. Well, it's, and it's also, it's also the TV show continuity, which is very different from the book continuity in, in some important ways. I mean, obviously there's a lot of similarities, but, but there are some important ways in which it's different. And so. I mean, it's already a version of the expanse that isn't 100% Daniel and I's. So, I mean, we already, it's already a version of the expanse that's, you know, Narain Shankar was the showrunner on, and we had other writers and directors and, and stuff. So, so having somebody come in and work in that continuity just feels like expanding the writer's room a little bit, letting, letting more people in the writer's room. Uh, Daniel and I have been very strict in our absolute tyrannical control over the printed part of the expanse uh, <laughs> books. We, we do not allow other people to write expanse books, but, but you know, comics and TV shows and whatever. It's okay. We can let people in. What do you think uh, a medium like comics can add to storytelling um, in the expanse universe? That's different from the experience of reading a novel. I mean, it's a visual storytelling medium that does not cost as much money as TV. <laughs> it's, it's, so you, you can, you can make, you know, you can make visually told stories with comic books. Um, and you don't have to spend millions and millions of dollars to do it, which is the plus side, you know, so people get, people get to see the faces that they're used to from the TV show. Cause the artist is drawing right. the actors. Um, they get to see the, the look of the world. They, copying the ships and those sorts of things. So you get that visual element of it. It's sort of that hybrid between books and, and TV shows is where the comics live. So you've been building the Expanse universe now for over a decade. Crazy. Um, especially because when the book came out, I was like, I was running a shop selling it. So that's extra crazy. Um, but and many fans have been on this journey with you since the start of the Expanse. What's it been like interacting with those fans? And do you have any like favorite experiences that come to mind when you think about the people who love this world that you guys built so much? 
Um, do you ever talk to fans, Daniel? I do. I sometimes talk to fans. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, sometimes Ty, I talk to fans. Like, and, and, no. And there's, there's also, I mean, uh, we're, we're very lucky that a bunch of the people who have worked on it have also been uh, enthusiastic about it. Um, the the times that have been kind of the most rewarding for me are the folks who have had the expanse be something where they could um, use it as a, a bridge to talk to someone else in their family. Usually I can, I'm thinking of a couple of people who talked to um, their parents about it. I, I've had two people I know who I, and these people I worked with um, who had a parent who was uh, in the home stretch parent who was dying and the expanse was um, kind of the the safe place for them to talk and visit about something um, in wow. those those falling. That's that's heavy for like uh, you know pew pew science fiction stuff. Um. <laughs> that's also very sweet, like that 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 you built in a universe that's connecting generations a little bit closer. Again, totally not what we planned. Not pizza <laughs> money. You know, reconciling families in their filing day, final day is not actually part of the mandate, just extra. I like seeing the stuff that people make. Um, you know, that they're very creative people, very um, detailed, uh, uh, like I'm assuming severely OCD people who make <laughs> these amazing like costumes and props and stuff. And, wow. and they're making stuff that I'm looking at it and I'm going, that's like, 90% as good as the thing we had. And the thing we had cost a hundred thousand dollars. And that guy made that thing in his garage. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm just very impressed by the makers who show up when you have a, a yeah. universe like this and start building stuff, you know, 3d printing ships and, and making amazing costumes and all that stuff. And, um, and as part of that, um, getting to meet like sort of the God makers. Like, I mean, I've become good friends with Adam Savage and he's sort of like the God of makers, right? Sure. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. You know, part of why he got into the show was because he was making stuff and he liked making ships and uh, spacesuits and stuff. And so we became friends through that. And so uh, the, the, the people that I see online showing pictures of the things they make, I, that's probably my favorite fan interaction is seeing all that stuff. Um, Cause they're really good. They're, they're yeah. amazing. So what are some of your personal favorite science fiction stories? For me, the biggest sort of visual marker for what I was thinking about when we made The Expanse was um, the movie Alien, the first one. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Ridley Scott's oh. masterpiece. That sort of grimy, dirty, oily interior spaceship, you know, with with guys in coveralls and tool belts fixing leaky pipes in the ship. And and it was the first time I had seen sci-fi where it wasn't like admirals and captains and, and military officers in these glittering clean spaceships. It was grungy guys in coveralls who complained that they didn't get paid enough. And it yeah. was sort of like the merchant marine of space. And I was like, why aren't there more science fiction stories like that about those guys? I really wanted to see mm. more sci-fi stories about Parker and Brett, you know, the two guys who are like fixing stuff on the ship and are mad because they don't get as much money as everybody else. I just wanted to see a whole lot of stories about those guys. And that was kind of part of the impetus for the expanse too. That was like one of the last ones that was uh, all practical too. I mean, yeah. that and, and Blade yeah. Runner um, just talking about a visual medium and, and kind of the, the beauty of that era of filmmaking uh, the, the, when they were doing that, that the practical stuff just ages so well. Agreed. It, just, it it does Agreed. such amazing stuff. It, it forces you to get creative. I, I like how we've completely pivoted to know. talking about like film budgets now, but it forces <laughs> you to get creative when you're on a shoestring budget. You know, you have to you have to really think about where where that dollar spend is going. Limitations make things better. I mean, the yeah. the, the, the the famous story, of course, is the shark in Jaws. I mean, uh, Jaws is a classic because the shark didn't work. Mm -hmm. If the shark had yeah. worked, they would have shown it a ton and that would not be the movie it it was. Are there any comics that you guys were inspired by or that you just enjoy that you would suggest for anybody who's out there currently reading? I, I love Sandman. I have the entire Sandman collection. Um, my, my wife bought me the the limited edition hardcover Sandman. Um, With the mask? The whole, yeah, the whole set and, and, all, and including all the death stuff, you know, uh, the high oh. cost of living and all the, all the, and I have those on my shelf and periodically I reread them. 
Um, and then for me, the other two that were huge when I, in my formative or three, I should say that were formative for me when I was reading comics a lot. Cause I, I haven't read them a lot recently, but, um, Frank Miller's Ronin, mm-hmm. uh, um, which was his sci-fi classic. weird comic. Um, I read all the lone wolf and cub comics when they were coming out. And then for me, like a lot of people say Watchmen is the best comic for me. It's V for Vendetta. V for Vendetta sure. is my v absolute Vendetta favorite comic of all time. And I, I think, think it's um, Alan Moore's masterpiece. I always pitch Astro City. Uh, I love Ast- Astro City. Astro City is is um it's it's probably my favorite. Um, I don't have a complete run of Sandman. I do have a complete run of Astro City. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. It's it, yeah. I, I just admire that project so much. The hiccup, the problem I have with kind of mainline superhero comic books is that they kind of have to be soap operas. They can't yep. end. They yeah. can't end a story. Um, and Astro City is built so you can tell little, pretty, vignette, complete stories. And it uh, warms my heart. Brennan Lee Mulligan is not really well known f- as a comic book guy, but he did a couple volumes of something called a uh, Strong Female Protagonist that yeah. has some of the most interesting... You're talking about... Um, kind of obstacles making uh, creativity, just narratively, some of the most interesting decisions in a, a, a superhero comic. So I, I've, I've been a fan of that one since it was a web comic. And I have the two volumes. I don't know if they ever did a third one, but. I don't remember because I did read that one too and it was a web comic and I really liked it and enjoyed it. Because yeah, he, they, there was definitely some more interesting choices that were made that I hadn't seen a lot made, especially by female leads in comics at that point in mm-hmm. time so yeah also a fan of that i i do love me some bread and lee mulligan one of the most insane creative minds <laughs> i've ever I, got to I, experience uh, it, it, talking about bridging uh generations um my daughter loves this stuff and and you know, was showing me youtube clips of, of mm-hmm. things he was doing i was like wait i know that name oh so <laughs> Yeah. So we got to bond. A, I got to bond with my kid. I <laughs> love that. Yeah. Uh, huge, huge fan of him ever since uh, the, the college humor days, for sure. Back when yeah. it was just weird comedy oh my sketches. Gosh. College humor. Uh, yeah. Well, Daniel and Ty, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this has been fantastic. And genuinely, we're honored to have the chance to speak with the two of you. Uh, like we said up top, The Expanse has been really formative for uh, the two of us here hosting the show, but for just about everybody at Boom. Uh, so with all of that, please tell the good people of the internet where they can find you and your work. Well, um, I, I recently fled Twitter. So at this point, if you're on Blue Sky, Yay. you can come uh, hang out with me there. But... Um, the website we have is, uh, www.jamesessaycorey.com. And also you can, if you're into it, we're doing this Patreon thing, um, where <laughs> we're writing a novel in public. Um, so you can look for James S.A. Corey writes a novel on Patreon. Come hang out. I love that. If you want to watch so cool. us argue about story points and, and write chapters. Yeah. And see exactly how bad the typos are in the first drafts. That's it's all there. It's ugly. It's not pretty. I can't recommend I love it. it. I love it so much. Uh, thank you to everyone listening. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out the original Expanse novels, beginning with the Hugo nominated Leviathan Wakes, uh, and pick up the latest issue of the Expanse Dragon Tooth at your local comic book shop. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to catch the full length episodes in podcast form wherever you listen to podcasts. And of course, if you do want to stay up to date on all the cool things, especially the cool expanse things that we're doing here at Boom, make sure that you follow us uh, on YouTube and on your podcast for Boom Direct, uh, as well as Boom Studios on all your social media. Uh, Remember, comics are for everyone. Which is why we make comics for everyone. I'm Anthony Morrow. And I'm Harley Sobaka. And this is... And this is... Boom Boom Direct. Direct.